Today's game, let me ask you guys about today's game because it's gone smaller, right? AI, how do you think you would do in today's game? 40. Same. Or worse. Imagine Allen Iverson in today's NBA and what he will do. You're talking about an incredible scorer who can drive to the basket, finish in traffic, and hit jump shots. His scoring versatility will be valuable in a league that heavily emphasizes perimeter scoring. While Iverson wasn't known for three-point shooting during his era, he was a capable shooter. With three-pointers that became a huge factor in the modern NBA, he could adapt and become an even better three-point shooter. If you add his exceptional ball handling skills and ability to create shots for himself, it will make him a nightmare for the league. And to add to that, Iverson was a tenacious defender and led the league in steals multiple times. His ability to disrupt passing lanes and create turnovers will be valuable in today's fast-paced game. You might say that Iverson's size will be a big problem, but he was already playing against Giants and was in one of the most physical eras in the NBA. If anything, he should be okay with adjusting to this era. He could play both guard positions and be a scoring point guard in smaller lineups. But one thing that stands out and you hear many of these NBA legends say is his speed. You must be in peak physical condition before facing Allen Iverson and even then you will still be tired. So here are NBA legends and players showing proof of why Allen Iverson would dominate today's NBA. After this video comment below how many points do you think a prime Allen Iverson would average in today's NBA. Left 20 gallons of sweat on the court every game. That's AI. Iverson made you proud to be part of the NBA. That guy was so good, so tough. Iverson easily by price for two. Allen Iverson talking to Charles Barkley. Couldn't nobody stop him. He could score anytime he wanted to, 40s, 50s, whatever he wanted to do. Allen Iverson four straight with 40 or more. Allen Iverson with 50 for the night. Take Michael Jordan once. He shook him twice. Man, I'm not even gonna lie to you, Rage. I didn't match up with him, but I knew I was in situations in pick and roll where I switched out on him. And I'm not gonna lie, I was scared to death because I could play, <laughs> I could play defense and all, but I knew I couldn't slide my feet with Allen Iverson because every night when you looked up at the Sports Center highlights, he was crossing somebody, he was putting somebody in the mix. So all I knew was when I switched on him, I was gonna give him that Olay defense. I was gonna lie, I'm gonna let him do his move, but I'm gonna let him go. And hopefully, I can send him to the baseline because I was not trying to slide my feet with that guy. So I didn't for, want to end so, up on nobody's sports center highlights, period. From his time in the league. Um, watching him one night get carried out of club <laughs> in DC. So this is like a Tuesday night. DC popping. Woo! Good club. Allen Iverson. <laughs> Wednesday, watching the Philly game. 48. <laughs> Like, Jesus Christ. Like, you, you know how when you wish someone was a little taller, a little stronger? Out of all the players i ever seen, I wish Allen Iverson was 6'6". Six, six. Oh, disgusting. 6'6". Six, six. That'd be crazy. 6'6". Six, six. It's Kobe Bryant. We will be arguing he's the best player that ever played. It's Kobe Bryant. 6'6", six, yeah. six, Allen Iverson is a Kobe Bryant. No, 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 no. 6'6", six, six, Allen down. Iverson I'm is not a Kobe bubble. Bryant. 100%. Kobe, that was Allen crazy. Iverson was running through walls. Yeah. Like, if, I, if you're going to put 60 on me, I will choose Kobe Bryant to put 60 on me before guarding a 60 from Allen Iverson. And crossover Jordan, which is, you know, I mean, when he came in with this crossover, no one had seen this type of crossover in the game before. Take a look at the crossover. Mike said, no. Oh. Allen said, yes. The bucket, the crowd loves it. Am I going to try to get out of Iverson? Iverson draws Jordan now. No, I mean, that was a great move. I, I'm not a, I'm never a type of guy that says, you know, I can't get shown up. I just try to limit those opportunities. <laughs> you know, so I'm not going to try to make it a one-on-one -on -one thing between Allen Iverson and myself, because we never know if we have to play a one-on-one -on -one game. I think he can beat me on the perimeter, but I can take him in the post. Uh, but he's a heck of a good player. He's a young talent. Much higher scale. I mean, right now he's doing a lot of physical ability. He's good. He's quick. Uh, that's a challenge for me to try to go out someone and uh, his stature is so quick and small. But it's a challenge that I'll back away from. He may cross over on me again. Uh, at least I, I'm gonna get out there and try. You know his his game is speed, and uh, you know he's 
you know, he's hurting bad. You know? Alan is a warrior, so nobody knows by the time he goes sleep today, and he's going to feel tomorrow. I actually had to guard this guy, and, you know, it was one game where he was killing us in Philly. He was killing, like, our guards, and Doc gave me that look like, it's your assignment now. The dude <laughs> never stops running, so I got to <laughs> score, and I got to slow him down. I was so tired after the game. I, I was the last one in the shower just like soaking and, and trying to figure out why am I so tired <laughs> from guarding and chasing this dude all over the court. But he was a joy to compete against. Iverson is popping, hopping, popping. It's like guarding Steph. I don't want to guard a Steph Curry 60. No, that's embarrassing. A, a, a Kobe 60, you're in, you're in spots. I mean, He's going to put me in his pose. He's going to put me at his elbow, elbow, elbow. Versus... A 60 where you're guarding someone who is all over the place. You running it's around. more tiring. Allen was that, that, he was like that white boy player in high school <laughs> that played balls hard, like yeah. sweating on you playing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But he was the, the talent. You know, he was the, it was the talent. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. he was, so, you know, he's playing 150 miles an hour mm -hmm. the whole time. Today's game, let me ask you guys about today's game because it's gone smaller, right? AI, how do you think you would do in today's game? 40. Same. Or worse. Or no, worse? 40, 40. You're saying 40 over here. Oh, easily. 40. Who's going to guard them? That's Nobody. my question. There'll be a lot of people on Shaq and the Fool, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if you look at it, if you look at it, who, who, who now would be able to guard? Shaq and y'all. Nobody. Nobody. Right. Y'all need to go back and look at the highlights. That was a poor representation of the highlights. No disrespect to anybody, but I'm a fan of the man. And one story I have. We have a practice. He's going hard as I don't know what. The media's been on him, kind of all this, and he's just mad. He's quiet. He's not saying nothing. I'm like, oh, yeah, I feel something coming. We go to Milwaukee. It was the best game I've ever seen by a teammate in my life. He gave them 60-something. Passing the ball, doing his thing. Was he a difficult player to play with? He only knows how to score. He only knows how to go hard. But I've never in my life, never, played with a player that played as hard as him on the court. You look at him and what he did, man. You name me another guy with the heart he had every night. He used to wear hockey pads. You know the pads that go, you guys probably want them too. The pads that go all the way around you. I used to see him after games, bruised, banged up. And his only thing was, yo, Wab, I got to go hard. He would die for this game, but he would have two giant tennis ball-sized bursa sacks on both sides. Both of his hips are black and blue. Because keep in mind, this is a small yeah, guy. Yeah, compact. This is back when the league was physical. Early 2000s, when I first got in the league. And what he went through every day just to get on the court, like as players, although I came after, they're like, you want him to save it for the game. Mm. Because again, like I said, he's walking around like an old man, and then all of a sudden those lights come on at 7 o'clock, and he's superhuman. I think a lot of the guys that can handle the ball and create space are the, are the best scorers, like the Allen Iverson. Iverson dribbles right through the double team, like it wasn't there. <laughs> How about that spin move by Iverson? Toughest guard to defend because of their dribbling ability. Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson. Hey, uh, I'm gonna have to go with Allen Iverson, man. Allen Iverson is one of the guys that, uh, because of his speed and quickness, is just hard to guard. <laughs> yeah, you have to really, really focus on him. Well, that's just a monster move by Iverson. Every minute, every second on the court, you have to know where he is because he is that dominant. It's not a guard out there that, that does things like he's doing on the floor. I mean, he's unbelievable. That is a sensational move from Allen Iverson. At six feet, he is basically unstoppable. Iverson just come at you and you, you know you like it. What's gonna happen next? I tell you, Iverson can do just about anything he wants against anybody in basketball. AI has been doing it for years. You know, his crossovers, his his toughness. The one game in Philly, he was just rocking the points up. Iverson finds his way in for two. How did he do that? When I just, you know, found myself looking at him, like, um, you know, he's just, this, this guy is unbelievable. He's an assassin, especially in the full court. He can't be stopped. He says Iverson held it, and a foul by AI. The toughest player probably to stop in open court is Allen Iverson. I mean, I think he does a bulk of his damage and scoring in the open court. The speed that he possesses from baseline to baseline, I don't think it's matched by anyone in this league. <laughs> and here come the Sixers on the run. Iverson, whoa, man, what a move. 
drive. Wow. Well, high in the back, and he laid it in. A dazzling move. I just, I think for a guy his size, he was the most intimidating player in the NBA. I mean, you think about a guy six foot, 160 pounds. He was intimidating because physically he had a level of speed that nobody had ever seen. You know about to kill a crossover, but to, to see Webb's point, the athleticism and then the relentless attack mode that he was in. Because that was the thing that made him so tough because some guys you would play against, and Rick, you know, they're like, they're going to take 16, 18 shots a game. You know, you're going to have an opportunity to defend them. Iverson would go out there and take 35, 40 shots. He was in attack mode the entire game, and that just put a tremendous amount of pressure on five guys defensively. It wasn't just a point guard. Fearless. I just never seen anybody like him. He's just fearless. That's what I respect most about him. He brought it night in and night out. You talk about guys that had an attack mode like Jordan and Kobe. They're always compared. He's on par with them in terms of his aggressive attack to, to, uh, to the game. Uh, he meant everything to me. Um, you know, I grew up in North Carolina, and I loved Michael Jordan to death. But I think uh, Allen Iverson had the biggest influence on the game of basketball than anybody. You know, I, I don't even think it's close. And a lot of kids and even guys in the NBA will tell you, you know, uh, the the sleeves that guys wear in their arms now, that's Allen Iverson. You know, some guys wear it as a fad now and stuff like that, but that's Allen Iverson. <laughs> When I was a kid, I wanted braids because of Allen Iverson. You know, I wear number three the way that I play because of Allen Iverson. He maxed out. He is, yeah, he maxed he out. Maxed I don't out. think there's any any guard that size other than Isaiah that's going to have that career. You won't look at Allen Iverson and say he did not reach his potential. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was MVP of our league once. Mm -hmm. you know, Four-time so, scoring champion. Yeah, yeah, so I, you know. Yeah, uh, but my first regular season game in the NBA in Philly against Allen Iverson, starting point guard. And I was scared as hell. <laughs> but I was so excited again, because I'm like, yo, I get to go up against one of my idols, right off the bat. And I started the game out good, I remember that. Now we didn't win, AI probably had way more points than me. I think I had like 18 and you know, a few other stats, but just to be able to watch him on the court. You know, I remember watching kids like go crazy for his shoes when we were in high school. Right, like when he first came out with the red toe, with the, you know, the blue tip, the red tip, you know, when he came out with those, I didn't have them, but I remember watching everybody in my high school, like, he was the coolest thing, man. And so to get an opportunity to see him on the court and, and see him and be like, yo, he's the coolest dude. Like, he got the braids, he got the, you know, the arm sleeve, he got the tats, he, he got the swagger, and he got the game to back it up. Just a lot of great battles, um, and he pushed me. You know, I had a couple games where I had 40 versus, you know, Philly because, he pushed me to want to be on a level you know, of greatness, and he always told me, you, you wearing number three, you better rep that number. <laughs> and I tried to rep it. Time to get down. Back on Bryant, easy layup. Went to overtime, and I think he hit us for 50. And we, we, we weren't upset that he hit us for 50. We were upset because now we got to go 16-1. and one. We wanted to have the perfect season, the perfect record, but the way he played, he just kept coming and kept coming and kept coming. He fires two ball, got it again! He's way too good! Sixers shot the world with a game one victory here. I had heard about him and his greatness before I ever saw it. The crazy thing was it wasn't even really about his ability as a basketball player. It was about him as a football player. The yard line, Iverson moves to the inside. He's got the kind of record. He may go! But I remember hearing like every time he touched the ball, no matter where he was on the field, he was a threat to score a touchdown. Like that's how incredible, that's how dynamic he was. And I used to see clips and footage and, uh, and, and not even knowing he played basketball. You know, a lot of people from back home have said that he could have had the same success if he chose you know, to go, go the football route. He was that good, that talented, that athletic, that dynamic. And I think that mentality as a football player, which is necessary at any level in football to be successful, I think really helped him at his, at his size. In a league at the time where there was physicality, there were big men in the paint, they weren't hovering around the three-point line. Uh, but that mentality, that toughness, relentlessness that he played with, his attack mode was always on, was absolutely incredible.
I always play with my heart. You know, I play with my heart first, you know, because I feel like that's all I got. So there you have it. Why Allen Iverson would dominate in today's NBA. Tell me your favorite story from this video and make sure you like, share, subscribe, and until next time.